We start tonight at 6, tracking the chance for storms across the area through the night. Take a look at the radar on your screen now. We already have some storms out there. Let's check in now with our chief meteorologist, Jeff Lawson, to find out what's in store for tonight. Yeah, well, we have fewer storms out there right now, so definitely less rain compared to what we had earlier. Typically, this time of night, that would be a good trend, but a typical night doesn't have an approaching front, so I think our odds are going to tend to go back up a little bit later again as well. You can see right now, storm definitely a pretty heavy one, right about over the Wakefield uh, radar site, a little closer to Waverly, actually. Still some heavy rain up near the I-295 corridor from Chester over to the east. That is a flood warning. Earlier, they had a severe thunderstorm warning. You can see some of the outflow from these storms. That's the cooler air that is starting to work its way again across parts of Southside and even down into North Carolina. So through the evening, isolated showers and storms the first couple of hours. As we get a little bit later, there's going to be a bundle of energy and exactly where the storms tend to fill in later tonight is impossible to say, but we think it should be somewhere here across our general re area and uh, parts of the region. So that'll bring the chances again as we uh, go through late evening and er early overnight back up again, but then clear it out in time for tomorrow morning's rush hour for many of us. That'll also drop the temperatures. I'll talk about that coming up. All right, thanks, Jeff. Count on 13 News Now to keep you track of any storms. If we're not on the air, you can use the free 13 News Now app to get up to the minute forecasts right on your phone. Go to our website, 13newsnow.com, to download it. New video is shedding light on a holiday scare at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront. The man accused of shooting into a crowd and hitting six people during the 4th of July celebrations was in court just a couple of hours ago. It was Ladarius Trisvan's first appearance since he was arrested yesterday. 13 News Now reporter Stephen Graves has our story. Take a look. Starting out, you wouldn't even know anything was about to happen. People casually walking Atlantic Avenue around 1230 in the morning after July 4th festivities. That is until this. A woman scrambling into a store in the 1800 block. Others soon follow. Police say someone fired into a crowd randomly injuring six tourists. Ladarius Trisvan, days later, is the suspected shooter. Today, shop owners did not want to identify themselves out of fear of retaliation, but they say they immediately recognized Trisvan, giving us this video of him walking outside moments before. The man is spotted with others going to the side of the store, a sign blocking his and other faces. Soon, there's movement and a muzzle flash. Take a look again. It's not clear who the shooter is, but people scatter either way. Yesterday, Police Chief Jim Surveyor saying the oceanfront is safe and they had strong leads that led to arresting Trisvan. But those detectives have been working very close to clear that case, as well as the officers who responded to all of the shootings. At his first court appearance, a 21 year old asked to speak with family and to get bonded out. He told the judge, quote, I've never been in trouble ever. He's now charged with six counts of malicious wounding, among other serious charges. And Tris Van will be back in court soon. The judge actually granted him a bond hearing that's set for Friday. Reporting in Virginia Beach, Stephen Graves, 13 News Now. New at 6, a local sheriff has stepped down as he faces criminal charges. Gates County Sheriff Randy Hathaway submitted a resignation letter last week and left his job Monday. Hathaway says recent primary results and extra stress on his family are the reasons he is leaving. Back in January, North Carolina investigators charged Hathaway and three of his deputies with obtaining property by false pretense. Hathaway is also charged with failing to discharge duties. He is set to appear in court on those charges in September. Right now, a motorcyclist is dead after two people are fighting for their lives after a serious crash in Virginia Beach. It happened late last night on Virginia Beach Boulevard at Wexford Drive. Here's what the scene looked like early this morning. Police say the motorcyclist was speeding and crashed into a car. We're told the two people who are in the hospital right now were in that car. Tonight, Hampton Roads bids farewell to the former mayor of Chesapeake, Dr. Bill Ward. Dr. Ward dad died last night at the age of 84. Long before most had heard the name Obama, Bill Ward told his supporters, yes, we can elect the first black mayor in Chesapeake, and yes, they did. 
The NSU history professor made history in 1978 when Bill Ward was elected to city council. Other minorities were in local politics at that time, and the political climate was pretty tranquil even as the city underwent a major transformation from small town to booming suburbs. At that time, I think most African Americans was happy. Uh, see, at, at early part of the time, before we had elected mayor, we had the mayor would be in, we had a gentleman agreement that if the mayor would be white, the vice mayor would be African American. But that formula took a tailspin when Mayor David Wynn stepped down following controversy. Ward then ran in an at-large election and won. He was a leader's leader. Progress came at a price. If an issue involved bricks and mortar, there was controversy. City council meetings often went on for hours as small town forces and development forces went head to head. Ward became the referee. He felt that it was time for things to change in the city and from more of a uh, country area into more to a city. Ward remained sensitive to the needs of the African-American community. The longest serving mayor was at the helm when Chesapeake hired its first black city manager. He partnered with several organizations while encouraging the next generation to get involved in politics. Delegate-elect Cliff Hayes answered the call. He was uh, a part of the fabric of the city. Uh, and help mold and shape into what Chesapeake is today. With a population of more than 230,000, Chesapeake continues to grow. Those who admired Dr. Ward say he brought to the state's third largest city a sense of compassion. He respected people uh, regardless of your party, regardless of your, uh, your race or your political convictions. He respected people and respected their diversity. Dr. Ward served as councilman and mayor for a total of 26 years, roughly half the time Chesapeake has existed as a city. We now know the name of the pilot who died when his helicopter crashed into a row of townhouses in Williamsburg Sunday. State police say it was 85-year-old Henry Schwartz from Alexandria. 91-year-old Jean Donelko also died. She was inside the town home at the time. Investigators are still looking into why that chopper crashed. It's an unsettling statistic. The number of children in Virginia who are dying is on the rise, especially here in southeastern Virginia. Among the leading causes of death are abuse, neglect, and unsafe sleeping conditions. That is what caused about 18 out of 42 children to die in Virginia's eastern and region between July 2016 and June 2017. So an agency called Sleep Tight Hampton Roads is trying to stop that. They work to educate parents on safe sleeping habits, and they even give cribs to people who need them. It's so adorable to see a tiny little baby sleeping on dad's chest, um, but we've actually in the U.S. lost babies that way. Experts say it's also important for the community to get involved to prevent these tragedies. If you have a concern about a family or a child, tell somebody.